Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We're going to start with this double insulated wire. I'm not even sure if it's the correct name to use for this, but well, both the outer black insulation and the inner insulation of the wires are silicon. They can take the soldering iron at 300 degrees Celsius without any issues. There is no melting occurring. The one I got here is 26 AWG and there's about seven strands inside each one of these wires. It seems to be tin plated copper because I did the flame test and the, the individual wires just glow red. I also measured the resistance and it's about 0.132 ohms per meter. I would recommend getting the 24 AWG for a bit more strands inside each wire so you have a bit more applications where you can use this. Overall I can't say this is softer or better than the TS80 USB type C cable which I consider a reference in terms of quality but it's pretty close. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper so it's definitely worth checking them out. I was discussing this silicon wire with one of my patrons on Patreon.com and he suggested doing a test by rolling it on a dusty surface to check how sticky it is. Well the result is that it's not as sticky as the tattoo cable that I previously recommended for building an extension lead for the TS100 soldering iron but it's not as non-stick as the TS80 USB-C cable either. It's somewhere in between. So from now on I will recommend this one for building a DIY DC cable for the TS100 soldering iron you can go for the AWG24 size if you want to get a few more strands in there for increased current capability but this one should also be good enough. Same as always you'll find the link to this in the description below the video. In a previous video I showed the K-Footer K K705 which was this nice transparent silicon adhesive ideal for electronics it had some interesting properties it was non-conductive it had good adhesion uh, and it was transparent i will place a link on screen right now so you can check out that video but i wanted to try another one of their products so this is the k5905 and this one is a bit different it's meant as a sealant and bonding agent for outdoor led light installations and enclosures here is a short spec sheet I found online. It's also a silicon adhesive but not transparent and likely with a higher bonding action to the work surfaces. Due to the intended usage this is also likely to withstand high temperature gradings and other factors like moisture and dust. The manufacturer Kafuter seems to be well known in China and they seem to make a wide range of adhesives and sealants. I'll have to test this in, in a future video but I, I just did a quick test here I applied some on this uh, PCB and as you can see it's, it's pretty thick and hard to pierce and really good addition to this uh, shiny PCB surface so I kind of believe the, the specs that they, uh, they give on the internet. Next I received the heat shrink cassette for the label printer. This one I ordered a few months ago. It was a bit uh, slow to deliver but I'm eager to try this one because I think it can really be useful to have these heat shrink uh, named tags on wires. I have wanted something like this for as long as I've been tinkering with electronics and as you can see here I have the black on yellow version but you can find it in different uh, colors and sizes as well. So let's open this and install it on my label printer. And this really is heat shrink in a cassette form. Oops, it looks like it's not detecting the cassette being installed in the printer. 
And I think there is some bad news for me. I don't think this type of cassette is uh, compatible with my uh, label printer. At the first sight, they look almost identical, these two cassettes. But if you take a closer look, I believe this is the area which is used to identify if there is a cassette installed in the machine or not. And as you can see here, I have one slot, but here there are three slots. And if we look closely at the mechanism inside our printer, I believe there are some small micro switches in here. These ones which can be pressed or depressed and these will detect if there is a cassette installed or not. And in the case of this uh, heat shrink cassette, because we have those three holes in there, none of those uh, switches will be pressed and so the machine uh, is not compatible with this type of tape. But some of you might have uh, other types of label printers which might work with uh, this type of uh, heat shrink cassette. Unfortunately for me it doesn't work. I'll still place a link in the description because I think it's really cool to print on, on uh, heat shrink and have your wires labeled. This is a USB 3 type A extension lid with male and female connectors. This is about 50 centimeters long. I needed something like this to extend a USB 3 port located on the back of my desktop PC. And I must say the quality is decent on this brand. The wire is a, a bit stiff, but I guess that's due to the uh, wiring and thick insulation required for USB 3. It's important to have good quality cables on USB 3 so you can take advantage of the increased speed and power available. Uh, this particular one is uh, branded Sam Z. I hope I'm, I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly. It's written on the uh, connectors and I will link uh, this one in the description below so you can check it out. But it doesn't uh, feel bad at all. It, it actually feels really nice even when uh, the connectors plug in. You know how studio light assemblies typically have this uh, fabric diffuser in front of the light to provide even light on the subject without any hot spots or shading. I've always wanted to get some of that fabric to build my own lights or add diffusers over existing ones. So recently I saw this type of material shown in another YouTube video. It's called ripstop nylon fabric and it's usually intended for parachute making or kite building or camping gear like tents. But it also seems to work well as a uh, light diffuser. So I ordered some to give it a try. So here is a light source and uh, let's put the fabric over the light source. I would say it, it works reasonably well at diffusing that light. But let's also compare it to the proper stuff from a light tent for example. I believe this one works even better. It diffuses the light better than the ripstop fabric which kind of, you can kind of see a hot spot. But with the, this type of fabric, the hotspot kind of disappears uh, behind the fabric. So yeah, I think you might get away with using this one, but it's, it's not ideal. It's not something I would recommend unless you really can't find the proper stuff. But hey, you can still build kites or parachutes. I do RC models, so I'm pretty sure I could find some use for, for a material like this one. Next up I have a small joystick module. This is basically five switches into one with a common pin for all these switches. You get left, right, up, down and middle switch. And besides those, the designers of these modules have also decided to include another couple of uh, discrete switches on this board. So like I said, there is a common pin and then a signal for each one of these switches. Seeing how this is built and with the added uh, two switches, it kind of makes me think that this was designed for a particular project in mind. But one thing is certain, you can use this as a way to allow user input for your application. You can imagine a menu system where you could navigate up and down through the options and you could enter or exit an option with the middle switch and then you could adjust the values with left to right. 
These are fairly inexpensive so it's worth keeping one in the box of switches and rotary encoders for when you need to rapidly put together some prototype. Next I have a bag of 3535 1W red LEDs and you've seen me play with these 3535 LEDs in a previous video where I tested various LED drivers. I will place a link to that video on screen right now. But this time I ordered some red ones because I plan to build a small module with both white and red LEDs. I don't like the fact that uh, they send them in this plastic bag. I like my parts to be kept in the original plastic tape. But this can sometimes happen uh, when you order parts from AliExpress. The seller shows some screenshots from a datasheet in the product description. So I'll use those as a reference. The driving current should be 700 milliamps, but I'll probably use a lower current just to avoid having thermal issues. I've soldered one of these LEDs to a PCB so we can test it. So let's apply power and see the color of this LED and how bright it is. Yeah, so the camera obviously is not picking up how bright this is. I'm currently driving it at uh, 2.2 volts and it's pulling about uh, 250 milliamps and this is pretty bright uh, it's not something you want to directly look at the color it produces is also very nice and it's it's something that the camera doesn't really pick up but it's a nice red color exactly what i was looking for next i have a three pieces hex extension adapter set and you would think these are not really worth ordering, but I had this problem once where I went to the hardware store, ordered the particular wrench socket, but when I got home, I realized I didn't have the right adapter to use it on the tool I had, so I had to take another trip to the hardware store to also get the right adapter. So with this set of three, I should be covered for half an inch, a quarter, and three eighths of an inch uh, to adapt these from a hex socket to the corresponding square sockets. Next, I got myself a couple of these OBD2 diagnostic interfaces. The first one is cheaper and this is Bluetooth based, which makes it work only on Android devices because, well, iOS is restrictive when it comes to Bluetooth. The second one has a Wi-Fi interface and it creates this access point to which you can connect with your phone and then the apps know how to interface with these via that Wi-Fi connection. This way you can use an iPhone. Unfortunately the app I really wanted to use is only available on Android, but that's not the uh, only problem. Even more unfortunate, the app doesn't support my particular engine. The app is called VAG DPF and I like it because it gives information about the status of the diesel particulate filter. In a single page you see everything that matters and to increase the agony I realized all of this after I purchased the app and the dongles so now I have the app and some dongles but I can't really use them sure there are other apps which can be used for OBD2 diagnostics but they're not really good for the purpose I am seeking I tried a few of the free ones and they don't even provide decent error code reading but well it's not the first time I'm ordering stuff which I will not use and probably won't be the last time either when I order something or buy something without reading the description. And the last item in today's video, I got some of these micro stepper motors. I accidentally stumbled upon this shop on AliExpress which was selling surprisingly small stepper motors. I don't know if I will ever use these, but they seemed interesting and cheap enough to order a couple. The shop seems to specialize on small motors and gears, for example these two, the wiring is bundled together so it seems that wherever they came from it might have been like an X and Y dual axis system or it might have been a small printer, uh, they even have small gears installed on the axle of these uh, motors. I've also ordered this other one which seems to be the same size of motor but it's attached to this small plastic gearbox and I'm wondering if anyone from the viewers is recognizing these motors. If you know where these come from please let us know in the comments below. 
On the page of the uh, geared motor, the description said something about being used for focusing the lens on a digital camera, but if you know more, please leave a comment below. That was all for today. I hope you found something interesting in this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below and I would also really appreciate a thumbs up on the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with a new video.